morning everyone welcome back to harvest moon farm my name is mickey and today we are going to do some testing of sourdough <coughs> excuse me we're going to test some sourdough breads using one of them we're going to use einkorn and one of them we're going to use spelt and we're just going to see what the differences are and how these mix up and how they bake up um so i'm going to get an apron and we're going to get started Right, so I think the bowls that I'm going to use are in my dishwasher, which is, they're clean. I ran it last night. So I like to use this Danish dough whisk and you have to be very careful because the dough, the bread dough that you make with sourdough starter can be very sticky and very, it will dry like cement. So that didn't quite come clean. So I had to give that a little scrub. And we are going to weigh our ingredients. So I've got my scale out. My sourdough I fed last night before I went to bed about 10 o'clock and so it is nice and bubbly. Mm, smells good. It also smells like it needs to be fed. So let's go ahead and get this started so I can feed it. Okay, so whoops, I just turned that off instead of zeroed it out like a dangling. Okay. I think I'm gonna have to go downstairs and get some more grain. But this first one the spelt we're going to mix we're going to do half spelt and half um mm -hmm, half uh regular white flour regular all-purpose flour <coughs> So I need, for the spelt, I need 237 grams of spelt, and I do not have enough here, so let me go get my other jar. Okay. So we need 237, I have 133 here. So I'm going to turn this on and then I'm going to pour my spelt grains into it. Okay. And my mill that I'm using is the Mock Mill 200. I really love it. If you guys are looking for a mill that you know that you would be interested in, all right, so now we're going to add the same amount of all-purpose flour to our spelt. So we want 237. There we go. Perfect. And then we want to add 325 grams of our distilled water, which our water is filtered, so... And I'll link this basic recipe down below. It's the sourdough recipe, the same day sourdough recipe um, from Lisa on Farmhouse on Boone. And I'm just using it and modifying it based on some research I did for using different grains. Okay, so now I want 10 grams of salt. Okay, and then finally, we want 
We want 100 grams of very active bubbly starter, which you can see this is. Oh, I dropped some on my counter. Darn it. I've got this great big container that I'm using, partially so that I always have sourdough starter and partially because I'm doing some experimenting. So it's awesome, but it also makes it hard to dip out kind of small amounts. All right, so I'm gonna take my dough whisk. All I'm gonna do is just stir this up enough to mix it. going to be kind of a shaggy ball. Get all the extra dough that I can get off this whisk into my bowl. And we're going to set it to the side and we're going to let those sit for 20 minutes. Okay, now we're going to do our einkorn, which for our einkorn we're going to use 100% einkorn versus mixing. So we need 475, oh, that was so close. our einkorn. So actually, let's do this. I'm going to pour what I want to mill back into this jar so that I can let it mill into my bowl. Oops, I dropped some on the counter. Oh, just a couple. Okay, so we're going to turn the mill on and then we're going to run our grain through it. Okay. So we're gonna put our lid back on that and we're gonna bring this over and we're gonna get it started. Okay, so we're gonna add So we're going to add 10 grams of salt, I need to refill my salt jar and when I put my spoon in there now it gets lost. Okay, so now we are going to add our 100 grams of starter. Whoops, there we go. Okay, so for einkorn, it can, it needs less liquid. If you use the same amount of water, it's not gonna turn out very well. So we want to use roughly two-thirds to three-fourths of the normal water. So we want 325. So I am going to use, let's see, two-thirds would be just over 200. So I'm going to use about 250. I tried this the other day and I used exactly two-thirds and it was still a little bit too dry. So I'm going to use 250 and we'll see how this turns out. All right, there we go, 250. So we've got all of our other ingredients in, so now we're going to go ahead and just Stir this up. So 
Same thing, we're gonna stir it up until it just looks like it's all mixed in. Now this dough will actually look a lot drier than the other the one we made with spelt. Oh, I must have done it right today because it looks much better. When I made it where I used exactly two thirds, the dough was really, really dry. So I think it needed just a little more liquid. Okay, so I'm gonna give you a look at how these, each of these looks. Excuse me, kitty, 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 kitty. Okay. So this one, so this is the 100% einkorn. This one is our 50-50 mix of spelt and all-purpose. So you can see the einkorn is darker. And so now we're gonna let that, excuse you. We're gonna let those sit about 20 minutes and then we're gonna move on to the next step. But we're not gonna waste that 20 minutes. So I started some regular sourdough yesterday just made with all purpose flour. I'm gonna feed that here in a minute. And it has been fermenting in the refrigerator. So I put this in last night before we went to bed. And so it's, it had risen quite a bit before I messed with it last night. <clears throat> so now I'm gonna dump this out onto a floured work surface. And now I'm gonna start shaping it. So we wanna take the bottom and pull it up and into the middle. So what we're doing is creating tension on this bottom surface, the surface touching the counter, which will become the top of our loaf. So we want to just really pull that in and this dough is actually quite a bit easier to work with since it's cold. But we're going to, the more, the tighter you can get that surface, the better, because that's what's gonna cause a nice rise in your dough. So, I'm gonna get that bowl. I'm gonna get another towel. I'm gonna go ahead and put this towel in a bowl. And then you really kind of want to flour the heck out of it. Because we want to make sure that our dough doesn't stick to this towel. So we're going to put this smooth side down. What will be our top is on the bottom. We're going to cover this up. Whoa, throw flour everywhere. Now I'm going to set that to the side and I'm going to let that do a second rise until it's doubled and then we'll go ahead and put it in our pan and get it baking. So, while we work through that, before we're ready to do our next step, I'm gonna clean up my countertop, put my mill away, and feed my starter. All right, so let's go ahead and get this sourdough, get our starter fed. Uh-oh, did my battery just die? My battery just died. Let's see, do I have the right battery? Oh. Success. I feel like I bought some more triple A's I don't know where they are. So hopefully these are good. But 
these are still the original batteries that I had when I bought this. And I've had it for quite a while, so that's pretty good. Okay, so we're gonna put our starter on here. I'm gonna zero, I'm gonna zero this out. And then I really am not super, oh, I'm really not super specific about how much I feed. In this big container, I probably should feed it more because it smells like, it smells sort of like fingernail polish remover. And when that, when you get that smell, that really means that it's hungry. So I'm gonna feed this a little bit extra today. So I'm gonna do about, about 200 grams of flour. And of course, you do not have to do something like this. A small jar is fine. I, when I'm just doing just regular, trying to maintain my sourdough starter, I typically use either a pint or a quart jar. Sometimes a pint's not enough, depending on what you're doing, but a quart certainly is fine. You don't have to have this gigantic thing. So now we're just gonna add 200 grams of water. And we're gonna stir it up, put it back on the counter. And if I don't use this, I'm gonna to have to start discarding some, which is fine. I can make, I need to make some things with discard. I've got lots of recipes. I need to make more crackers. The crackers that we made together a while back were so good. And of course, they didn't last long. And because they're homemade and not store-bought, they're not gonna have all those preservatives. So they're not going to last as long. I just because we both love them, I need to kind of get in a habit of making them regularly. But probably not today because I've got a lot going on. All right, so we'll get our scale and our starter and everything else back where it goes. Let's see, so I'm gonna make myself a cup of tea and then it'll be time to move on with our next step for our, our dough. All right, so we've got our first 20 minutes here. So what I'm gonna do, so I wet my fingers so the dough isn't so sticky. And what, what you do is just kind of grab the dough, pull up a piece and pull it towards you into the middle of that dough push it down, do a quarter turn, do it again. And you wanna go around about three times and you'll notice that the dough starts making a more cohesive ball. And so if you're not familiar, this is called stretch and fold. And so you can see that this looks a lot different than the dough that I showed you just a few minutes ago. Okay, so now I'm gonna take a tea towel and I'm gonna cover that and we're gonna let it, we're gonna let this rest for 20 minutes. So we're gonna do the same thing with our einkorn. Now the einkorn, as I said, is a lot, the dough is a lot drier, so you can see it doesn't, kind of stretch the same way as the, the half and half dough does. But we don't want to use too much liquid because then our, our loaf will end up flat. Now, you guys have seen my some of my sourdough attempts, some of mine end up flat anyway. So we're gonna just see how this works out. So <clears throat> one of the reasons I'm doing these different dough, these different grain types is because one thing I'm curious, I've seen all these different, these videos where people use all these different grains, different grain mixes, and everything always looks so good. So I'm curious, I wanna try it out and see how these taste, how they do. 
And also, these ancient grains, these older grains, are so much better for your digestive system. So, my daughter, our youngest daughter, has gluten sensitivities. She doesn't have celiac, but she has gluten sensitivities. So I'm trying to find something that's really good that I can make for her that maybe she will eat. She doesn't live here, but she's usually here once a week doing her laundry. So, um, you know, this is both for curiosity, experimentation, and also um, for our better health. All right, so we're gonna let this sit for 20 minutes, and then we're gonna do it again. We'll let it sit for another 20 minutes and do it a third time. So I'll be back when we're ready to move on to the next step. All right, so we're on our last stretch and fold. So we're gonna do the same thing. And you'll notice that it is much stretchier. So we're building those gluten strands that are going to give us a nice rise to our bread, <laughs> ideally. I mean, we've seen mine, it doesn't always happen. And as you do your stretch and folds, it will get harder and harder to stretch, but it starts out really stretchy. Alrighty. So there's that one. I'm going to cover this back up. Wet my hands again. So this, this obviously this dough is different, but I can stretch it quite a ways before it wants to tear on me. So that's good. <clears throat> All righty. There we go. So we're going to ball this back up. Cover it up. Okay. So now we're just gonna let these sit on the counter right here until they've doubled in size. Ideally, depending on the temperature in your house, this is gonna take between five and eight hours. So if this really only takes even eight hours, we should be able to finish this tonight. If it is not doubled in time for me to finish processing it tonight, we're gonna stick it in the fridge covered with plastic and we'll finish it tomorrow, just like we're doing with this dough. So I'm just gonna give this a check. And it is starting to rise. It's still pretty cold from, um, you know, it was in the fridge all night. So it's still pretty cold. I'm gonna set it right there. So I'll be back. This dough should be ready to bake before these are ready to do anything else with. So I'm gonna, when, once this dough's ready to go into the oven, then I'll come back and I'll show you how we're how we're gonna bake that and how it looks when we're done. Okay, oh gosh, I hate flies. All right, so my husband and I did a bunch of work in the garden this morning. So came in and got cleaned up and our sourdough that we had in the refrigerator last night is just about ready. So I've got something in the oven right now at 375 I'm making some more breakfast egg and ham muffin things. I don't really know what to call them. They're like a muffin made with, so the, the ham creates like the shell of the muffin and it's got egg and cheese in it. So I've got some more of those in the oven for my husband. I went ahead and put my cast iron crock that I'm gonna bake this in. It is in the oven right now as well. When my egg muffins are done, I'll take those out and I'll turn the oven up to 500 and we'll let it preheat and then let it go um, maybe 15 minutes or so because by the time it gets up to that temperature it will take just a little bit. And then we'll go ahead and get back to our dough and get it ready to go in the oven to bake. I'm so excited. Okie dokie. Our oven is preheated to 500. 
I'm going to take this out. Get a sheet of parchment paper. Please do not let this stick. I'll be so sad. All right, so I'm going to should have done it a different way. I'm going to flip this over. Oh, 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 come on. Yay, look at that. Not very centered, but that's okay. I'll just grab another sheet here. We'll put it under this end. Okay, so. We're going to take our dough, we're going to put it carefully into our pan here, and it's obviously hot because we've had it in a 500 degree oven. I'm going to try and get this paper turned so that it's not... All right. Now I'm going to take my little razor blade here, and I'm just going to do a super simple design. You can do something as simple as just an X if you want. We really are just trying to open up a place for the steam to escape this bread dough so that it can um, puff up and be nice and risen high. So we're going to put our lid back on. We're going to put this in the oven at 500 degrees for 20 minutes. When our 20 minutes is up, we're going to go ahead and take the lid off, decrease the temperature down to 475, and we'll let it go another anywhere from 15 to 25 minutes. Just You just kind of have to eyeball it and see when you think it's ready. We want our crust to be nice and brown. Um, and we also, if you give it a little tap, it'll have kind of a hollow sound if you tap it kind of with your fingertips. And that way you know that it's done. Okay, there goes loaf one, fingers crossed. That one definitely turned out better than any of the other doughs that I've done recently. Let's see. Our einkorn is not really rising a whole lot. Our... What's our other one? Oh my goodness. Our spelt, our 50-50 spelt is uh, doing okay. But it's just now been roughly five hours, so I am gonna give it another couple of hours depending on how things look as we go on. And when our bread is completely done, then we'll bring it out here and we'll take a look at it. Okay, people, look at this. This has got to be the most beautiful loaf of sourdough bread I have ever made. And it's going to be hard to get out of here because the papers. Oh, look. Look at this. Oh. Oh my gosh. That's amazing. All right, so I went ahead and turned the oven off since these are nowhere near ready for that stage yet. In fact, I have a feeling they may end up in the refrigerator overnight. Um, but, ow, gosh, that counter's hot. <laughs> um, but this, oh my gosh, I'm so excited. So we're going to let this cool. Obviously, we're not going to cut into it while it's hot because we'll just end up with a gummy mess. So there is loaf one. 100% all-purpose white flour, and I know that is not the healthiest, but I was just trying to, I was just trying to end up with a really pretty loaf, so I'm very, very excited about that. Okay, so I'll be back when, either when these are risen enough to do our next step, or when they're ready to go in the refrigerator. And actually, I think I can do the next step 
shake them and then put them in the fridge. So we'll just see how the day goes with them rising and then I'll be back and show you what they look like. All right, so these are still rising. They are getting better. We're gonna go ahead and cut this one and have some with dinner. Oh, ho, 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 look at that super soft crust. Oh my gosh. All right, look at that. Oh. Mmm, so good. It's too bad you can't cut sourdough bread like this when it's hot. Oh, it would be so delicious. All right, so there's, there's our bread. Um, so we're gonna eat dinner. I just wanted to show you guys how this loaf turned out. Okie dokie, so I picked two strawberries. I left one for my husband. I ate the other one, it was so good. There is nothing to compare homegrown strawberries and store-bought strawberries. I'm sure you guys know that, but this is just crazy. All right, so these have risen quite a bit, but I don't know that I want to take the time to shape them and let them rise again tonight. So I'm going to cover these with plastic wrap. We're going to stick them in the fridge and we will finish them off in the morning just like we did this white sourdough. If I can get a hold of the plastic, there we go. All right, so in the morning, I'll get these out. I'll let them start coming back to room temperature. We'll get them shaped and let them rise again. And then we'll bake them and see how they turn out. So these are going in the fridge. Gonna find some space first. All right, got that in the fridge. And so we'll be back in the morning and we'll get that shaped and rising and then we'll see how the bake goes. Our spelt is ready to go in the oven. Go ahead and cut the top. All right, so into the oven for 20 minutes it goes. All right, so that'll be our first 20 minutes when the timer goes off, we'll turn that down to 475 and do another 15, 20 minutes and see how it looks. All right, there is the, um, oh my gosh. There's the first loaf. And then I'm gonna do our einkorn, I think is as puffed up as it's gonna get. So let's go ahead and get this one. 
in the pan. <clears throat> it actually looks pretty decent here. <clears throat> so we'll go ahead and do our little cuts in the top of this one. Let's see. And so I'm gonna put the lid back on top of this. I'm gonna turn the temperature back up to 500 and we'll do our first 20 minutes like that. Oh, hear that kind of hollow sound when I tap the bread? So that means it's done. So I think it actually, I think it turned out pretty good. It was starting to burn a little bit on this one corner. So I can't wait until they're both done and both cool so we can give them a try. All right. So I'll be back when this einkorn loaf is done and we can take a look at both of them. All right. So here is the spelt, the 50-50 spelt and all-purpose flour. Here is the einkorn. So you can see the einkorn did not rise as much as the um, spelt and neither of them rose as much as the all, the 100% all-purpose flour. They both look good though. So we're gonna cut a little slice off of each of these and see what they look like and how they taste. So here is the spelt. The crumb looks pretty good. Mmm. Oh, that's really good. Here's our einkorn. So they look very similar. They do have a little difference in their color and their texture. So we're gonna give the spell or the einkorn a taste. They're both good. So, this one has, I don't know, it, there's a flavor that's like just out of reach of my brain and what it is. It's a little bit nutty. They're both really good. All right. So now that I've spilled some of my flour topping all over the counter, okay, I am gonna call this a win, even though they didn't rise as much as, as I would have hoped. They still are good and I think, um, you know, practice, I'll only get better, so. But they are delicious. My husband will be super happy well, that I've been having all this bread out because he eats it while I'm making dinner sometimes if he's really hungry. So that's going to do it for today's video. So uh, thank you for coming along with me while I do this experiment. And I'm quite happy to report that it wasn't a complete flop uh, like my last sourdough attempt. Um, so I really appreciate everybody taking their time out of their day to spend with me in my kitchen. And um, I will see you guys on the next video. Thanks.